which was on standards. I think Roy is going to present. Um, and then Hannah, if you can be ready to present on session three. And if there's time, we may even do a group group photo before lunch, but we'll see how that goes. So. Yeah. It needs to This one's on, it's okay. Well, yeah, sorry guys, me again. Um, <laughs> so I was, the, well, actually both Hannah and I were rapporteurs, it turns out, for the first session, or session two as it was called, um, when we had the panel discussion with the modelers. Um, I furiously scribbled down some notes. I was going to synthesize these in between then and now, but unfortunately I was invited up to pretend to be a celebrity. Um, so there might be a little bit of a more synthesis on this. Um, I haven't looked at what Hannah's um, written up yet, but I think some of the main points, but five, supposed to be five was what the advice we were given, but I got to seven here. Um, just to try to summarize the discussion a little bit, that yeah, historically it's been difficult to encourage people to work to different standards. Um, in fact, I'm going to start with number seven, because it's, I think this kind of sets the scene, the fact that we have to split out when we're talking about standards. Are we talking about um, the kind of fair data principles that Hannah was mentioning, or actual data metrics? Um, and there's a big differentiation there in terms of what we're talking about and how that's implemented in practice. Um, but historically, it's been difficult to encourage standards. Um, make sure we establish what the final goal is. So it seems to be interoperability rather than um, kind of data metric standards as such. Um, people seem to be saying that there's variation of success in standardization. I think that's in terms of metrics across different groups and um, other backgrounds. Um, certainly timestamp and georeferencing is a very good initial starting point if you're doing any kind of data collection activities. Um, there's, as you move move up almost beyond the farmer level, you get um, differences and reduction in stand, standards as you move away from that system. Um, modern methods, particularly modern data methods, are probably underutilized. Um, speaks to the lack of data scientists um, in the room. And then, yes, the final point there, point seven. Um, some of the main unanswered questions that I had on here is how to translate um, similar metrics into what can be used by the modelers. Um, can we improve documentation? And is there an opportunity to create standardized indexes to livestock similar to other, what other groups have done? Um, I think Andrew raised the point of is, you know, getting good metadata really the, a good starting point to get us moving um, on this um, kind of area. And yes, again, do we need to bring in modern, modern day data scientists to update and best technologies in practice? And yes, again, the theme of can we learn from other groups? And in terms of the key actions, SEBI, 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 sorry, Andy, um, but no, the fact that um, SEBI are leading a working group this afternoon and it is to be continued. I rushed through that pretty quickly. If anyone, I don't know if we want to offer a chance for feedback at all or if we just okay, leave it great. there. Um, thanks, Roy. That was. Uh... Nice synthesis. Um, Hannah? I think it needs to be on a stick, Hannah, unfortunately, because it's uh, Roy has a stick, yeah. It's an HDMI con connection. So any comments on Roy's synthesis? Any synthesis of Roy's synthesis? 
All right, it's, it's not so much a synthesis as a bit of a documentation since we just had the session. Um, I was trying to take notes as we were going. But I think that there were a couple of key themes that emerged from the data quality session. I actually wrote down what Louise said, that many of the data quality issues are often human issues. And I think what Orsi brought up in the beginning around in interpretation, um, how there's this uh, around terminology, interpretation of results, these are very much human you know, qualities of the way we're interpreting data. Um, the biases and errors that can be introduced either through biases in, in the way that we design our questionnaires, the assumptions that we're making, um, but also then the human errors that can be introduced. So I think the, all of the panelists provided some great best practices of how, do, how can we actually uh, mitigate against some of these, uh, these data quality issues. A few things, um, just listening that we heard from the panelists who are all collecting different types of data. So whether that's transactional sales data and working with um, the, the agro dealers or our farm surveys and R&D data, each of these different data types uh, present like different issues that have to be mitigated. So, but there are, all, are some common themes too, um, I think around how do you improve the timeliness of data? How do you improve the accuracy of data? And these are all standard um, components or characteristics of data quality that we want to bring to the different data types. Um, I thought it was quite interesting when we were listening from HHive, I think that's what it was called, um, this point around when you increase essentially the velocity and the resolution of data. So you have more frequent data at a higher resolution. It actually can have some unintended consequences. And as we are, I think, having a discussion and as part of this community and thinking about when we're um, filling data gaps or developing new data collection systems, we, you know, not only do we have to think about, you know, some of these, well, we do have to think about some of these unintended consequences also around um, confidentiality issues. So the higher, when thinking about, uh, we didn't mention, you know, satellite data or things like that, but as we are developing these new methods for collecting data to um, improve the quality of data, I think that we, it's really important to balance that with these and consider the unintended consequences that they might have and then be sure to plan for those up front. On the uh, right hand side, just some key points that came out. So validity and I, I put, so data quality is a term that we often use, but there are several different characteristics and there's defin different definitions of what goes into data quality. So timeliness of data, the relevancy of data, completeness, um, accuracy, these are just uh, some of the different components and trying to highlight them there. I liked what uh, we heard from OIE around validity. So looking at different multiple data sources, how do you verify and validate data before it's being published? I think that's a really important um, key and something that we should all be considering when reviewing data. Um, is, is what is the validity and are there different ways to triangulate different data sources? There's quite a bit of a discussion on electronic data collection. We, there are many um, strengths of electronic data collection. So when we're thinking about how do you automate the checking, uh, building in those logic tests, uh, I think 
you know, there, I've seen some examples of where in this real near real time, you can do this uh, outlier check for based on the distribution of the, you know, um, data that's already been collected to identify outliers. There's lots of different things that you can do, but that also has to be very carefully considered. Um, it, it, there are definitely benefits about reducing free text fields and having drop downs, things like that, that help with data cleaning um, and consistency. Increasing the timeliness is huge, um, and, but it also has its limitations as we discussed, and they, um, I think that's something that could be followed up on. And also, I think it's very important this point around up upfront planning and design of instruments. So we want to make sure that uh, the key theme was the relevancy of the data that are being collected. I think many people who are involved in data collection have experienced this where there's just one more question. Can we just add one more question to that questionnaire, right? And how many times do we see, you know, 90% of the data never being used, right? So there's a lot of time and effort, and especially when we're not only asking the enumerators to be in the field, but also farmers, uh, their times to sit and fill out a four-hour questionnaire and then when, you know, half the data is never being used. I think that's really important to think about the relevancy of the data that are being um, collected. These are just some of the things I was trying to jot down as we were talking about some of the uh, questions. Meredith, your point around how do we actually collect, connect these different concepts? I think it's going to be really important and I'm not sure if that's through a working group or whatnot, but uh, looking at the impact, what are we aiming for, what are the standards, in improving data quality, how do we bring these different concepts together so it actually is actionable? And so that, that brings up something that I think Andy, you know, brought up in the very beginning, like what is the impact of this community? So how do we, do we adopt some of these standards into our own practices? Like what, what are the outcomes of some of these discussions forward and outside of this meeting? The data collection, uh, you know, CAPI versus PAPI discussion on uh, an electronic data collection, I think there's some questions or discussion that could be had there around the pros and cons and strengths and differences of different data collection systems. So whether that's, um, you know, o ODK or some of the others, um, I think, it, again, it has to be fit for purpose. And to that point, how do we balance uh, reducing enumerator biases? with you know bringing that local and relevant knowledge and and coupling that with the technology um so there there's some questions there are some things that we could potentially pick up and then i liked the point around you know we we learned, heard a lot about best practices but how do you actually measure the quality of your data and what are the um, consequences of poor quality data um that that would also be an interesting topic to explore I didn't really hear any key actions that came out of that session, so maybe if anyone has anything to add, we could um, add them to the notes. Great, thanks, Hannah. I mean, I think some of these things will be picked up in a working group this afternoon, but Louise has a point to make. I think one of the actions we would like to discuss this afternoon is: is it worthwhile creating some sort of handbook? And getting, you know, perhaps a paragraph from some of the presenters, like a discussion around pros and cons of particular types of data collection system. So I think that was something that we were going to discuss as a sort of concrete action. Okay, so yeah, a data handbook. Um, any other points? <laughs> Not English. Uh, <laughs> she writes in Vietnamese. That's great. <laughs> Um, okay, great. So um, next on the agenda, thanks a lot, Hannah and Roy, for let's give them a little round of applause. For right. 